Hello, hello. Just getting set up here. So, I have a special match for you guys. This is a World Cup second round game. Uh, it's Indonesia v Hungary. Effigy versus Zello. Alright, so, uh, just to get you guys up to speed with what's been happening with the World Cup so far, there's a bunch of groups. Uh, each group has four countries. The top two countries out of a round robin in each group is going to move on to a single, I think it's single or double elimination bracket, can't remember which. Um, so this match is taking place in group four. Um, and so far, Hungary's got a 1-0 lead with uh, Sorry Kid beating Kai, uh, Crane v Crab. Um, standings uh if we have a look here hungary's own one uh indonesia's also own one um hungary with the slight tiebreaker edge because they had pretty close few games um so this is an important match for both these guys to win to uh stay in it uh with indonesia having the current lead so let's have a look at the decks uh this is zello's deck we see anything funky here. Cooney Laboratory is kind of interesting. It's one of these newer cards that I haven't seen much actually get played. Uh, I like the idea of it though. And uh, yeah, the rest of the stuff looks pretty reasonable to me. It's running the clouds, which is a lot of crabs these days doing. He doesn't have any, um, any of the Gaijin customs. And then this is an interesting deck. Zokujin carries the title. <laughs> um, so I guess he's running reclusive Zokujins. <laughs> Two of them. He's got 10 conflict characters, which is quite high. Um, nice little spread. A lot of one offs which I'm personally a fan of. And yeah, just a lot of good stuff. Uh, and he is running Edict for his restricted card versus Iron Mode over here. So let's get into it. I'm just going to post this on the requisite channels. Uh, where are we? L5R. Solo casting is always difficult. It's especially difficult uh, when you're fucking tired like I am now. But I'm gonna do my best for you guys. So, back to the action. Uh, all right, looks like quite a heavy fate commitment here from the crab player. He's got his Borderlands Defender with the Spyglass, which is always a pretty hot start. Um, Effigy is the first player. He's gonna go scouting and see what's under this iron mine, which seems reasonable. Nix is asking if I'm going to pick up US and Singapore. When is that match on, Nix, by the way? I just got done recording my podcast after a very, 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 very long day, so I'm kind of tired. Okay, so we see uh, a defense here with the Borderlands Defender. Um, and he's going to draw a card and first action Mountain. Which means there's not much that... Um, that Effigy can do about this, really. He's kind of got to concede this conflict unless he wants to commit, like, a lot of cards. Like, maybe a... Kachiko, an Honora or something.
We see an assassination. Um, wow, he is going to use the Iron Mine there. Interesting. Would you have done that, guys, out in chat? I don't know if I would have done that. Uh, Nix is telling me that the next... Excuse me. Next uh, game is US versus Singapore. In 52 minutes. Maybe we'll see. Grikugan TV. I take, is that is that Vasilis? What's up, Vasilis? How are you, my man? Uh, yeah, I think I would have kept the Iron Mine, but it depends what's in his hand, right? We don't know how he's trying to play on this turn. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry about that. All right, back to the action. Okay, so we see, this is interesting, uh, court games to dishonor into a box, into a meek informant. So we get to have a look at what else is in his hand. He's got a skirmisher, wayfinder, rebuild. So rebuild and a reprieve, that might give us some clue as to why he's comfortable discarding the iron mine on um, that assassinate attempt. A talisman, mountain, watch command, and away with the crab. So this hand's quite expensive. But considering he's already got his board set up quite nicely, um, it looks pretty solid to me. He doesn't have the fate to play any of these cards. Excuse me, but going into next turn, it's going to be uh, quite impactful. And it's... Effigy is going to get the, the ring. So he's going to strip one of the fate off this Borderlands, which is quite key. Um, all for playing the Conformant, which is quite a good expense. And we see a poke... Uh, right into Pilgrimage, which is ideal for Effigy, so he's going to be comfortable uh, letting that one go through to the Keeper and passing. This is kind of smart because it means um, he's able to do a second conflict without having to uh, bow out his Borderlands before effigy's second conflict so this is clever now if i'm the scorp player do i want to it's unlikely i win the conflict i guess if i have a bonsai i can win the conflict um earth rings looking pretty good question is do i want to scout his bro or do i want to just try and break or do i want to just go to where he's getting no effect interesting question I'd probably scout. Let's have a look at what's his row looking like. Manicured's kind of bad because it gives him... From going from zero to one fate is a huge boon. Uh, meditations is fine. Shameful display is pretty bad as well. Maybe he's just better off going and back at the uh, defend the wall. Which is what he does do. So I think that's clever. Uh, say hi in chat if you're watching. I'm, uh, I've got a two monitors open so you're welcome to uh chat to me there if you have any questions or comments okay so we do see the bonsai so yeah so there's no point in doing this attack unless he has this card to win the ring effect and he's going for air which is kind of interesting i guess he's feeling maybe he's a little low um, he knows that Zello has a watch commander in hand and he's future planning, trying to increase that on account a little bit so he can play a lot of cards next turn, which is smart. This is quite a difficult matchup for both sides, I think. Scorpion qu struggle quite a bit with Crab if, if the gang gets drawn out, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so he does like to do the steel one, which I think is smart. Um, you want to reduce the overall total p on a pool in the game rather than increase it by, by going plus two. Wow. And we see... Yeah, okay, I was going to say it didn't seem like the play to me to go for Pilgrimage. And he runs an upholding authority. Um... 
This is a province that you just want to break every time your opponent hits it. So I imagine Effigy is going to be comfortable just letting him take this Earth Ring. Earth is kind of a big cost though. A Fate Worse Than Death would also be a very strong play. Because right now Zello has no hand and it's going to clear his board. So if, if I were Effigy, I probably would have played it. Personally. It's likely that he doesn't have it given that... Uh, we do see a rebuild, and that goes through successfully. Um, which kind of means he doesn't have a Forged Edict, otherwise he probably would have played it there. So this is kind of interesting. Effigy doesn't have Edict and doesn't have Fate Worse and Death, at least to my understanding, because I would have played both of those cards. Um, but yeah, this is one province. Like, you're happy for him to run into all these others. This one is one you don't want him to repeatably enter. So let's see what he does. Griku Garden says three reprieves in hand. No, nah, it's um I think he's only got the uh the one. Because we saw it with Meek. So let's see what he goes for. I think there was just a lot of one ofs, right? Like one talisman, one mountain does not fall, one reprieve. Um He may have had two fans, which is why he would have played this fan. Let's just double check. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I would consider taking Talisman, Reprieve, Watch Commander is probably one I would take. I'd probably take Watch Commander. And he goes for Mountain Does Not Fall. This wouldn't be my first choice, given that I have Event Cancels in my deck. Given that I have... Uh... Yeah, it's interesting. I probably wouldn't have gone for that one. And Effigy loses the for shame. Okay, so what do you guys think of this? Because this means he could have favorable grounded in and for shame to bow this guy. And just negate the conflict. Rather than lose the ring, lose the province. I think that might have been a mistake. Uh, so going into turn two, who do we think has the edge? Well, Zello has broken a province, although it's not a super relevant one. Um, he does have a better board. Uh, with the Iron Mine as protection. Um, but Effigy's managed to bank 6 Fate. Um, hand size is basically the same. So I think it's a bit of a wash. I think I probably favor the Crab's position. Just because having card draw on board in this matchup is quite good. Given that the bids get constricted quite quickly. Um, kind of a, an interesting decision there not to try and win this conflict. Or at least negate the conflict. With the favorable ground there. I think I would have gone for that play. We see a first by Kai Envoy, which is quite strong. Um, and we know that he's got a way of the crab in hand. So it kind of forces you to buy a young rumor manga with no fate. Or nothing. Um, it's worth noting that Effigy's deck does have 10 conflict characters, so it's possible he's just going to buy the Rumor Mongo and then pass. He goes for the Falling Diplomat. So this is interesting. If if uh, Zello does decide to play the... the um, Way of the Crab, which I think he should, it's, just gonna, it's going to immediately get um, Effigy the favor. So he, wait, he elects to wait. He's going to try and... Uh, Feed this guy to the witch, steadfast witch hunter, which is also fine. If you guys um, like the sound of my voice, I've just finished recording episode 11 of our podcast, The Hidden City Roller Derby, uh, which I'll get a link to you guys in just a moment. If you guys like L5R content, check this out. It's a low-key, humorous cast, only about an hour long, and we just talk a lot of smack. Uh, okay. Alright, this is quite interesting. So, Zello has gone for the one bid. 
um, and Ethergy's gone for four. I really like this from the Crab. Um, when you've got a Spyglass set up, you've got an Iron Mine in play, you've got a uh, Watch Commander in hand. Um, Effigy just smartly let go of the Spyglass. When you've got that sort of a setup, uh, pulling the bids down low is never a bad thing in Scorpion, because Scorpion rely on playing lots of cards to exert their influence in conflicts. So I think this is a pretty smart decision to go for the one bid, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on, uh, on Effigy here. Let's see what he goes for. Um, so the World Cup, this is fantastic tournament series. Basically, I think it's about 24 or 26 countries submitted teams. Uh, and each country had its own, like, requirements for who was going to get it admitted or whatever. Some places used committees, some places used a tournament. Um, for Australia, we did a tournament series. Um, and then the top three players got, uh, elected. Um, but it's really cool. Uh, I really love seeing all the different uh, metas kind of coalesce and seeing some uh, some rivalries develop between nations is always fun. Fate Worse Than Death. This is a strong, a strong Fate Worse Than Death candidate here. Um, that one hurts. And with the... Favorable ground in reserve, it's going to be tough. This complex is going to be tough. Okay, and uh, the Wayfinder does see Rally, so I'm assuming that's under the box. Actually, maybe it isn't under the box. Let's see other problems. Let's have a look. Secret case, yeah, the Rally is definitely under the box. So we see an Ancient Master played into the conflict. This guy's really good to, to drop into a shameful display because you get a big skill boost. That was a tough result for the crab. Um, the Fate Worse Than Death just is such a huge swing of momentum in these conflicts. Um, tempo swing, skill swing. It's just a brilliant card. So we see Effigy take that one on defense. Um, now the question is, what does he go for here? I'd be inclined to pass my first conflict. It's unlikely I'm going to get two through anyway this turn. Uh, and then you force this Borderlands Defender to come out and attack. Um, which is certainly preferable to letting her defend and get having her text online goes up 98 in the chat it says let's go hungary yeah so zello this guy at the top is the hungarian player uh effigy's indonesian uh currently in this series the indonesian team is up one game i believe which means this is kind of do or die for the hungarians um Uh, so Hungary, Hungary will need to win out this uh, this series to have a chance at, at be, being top two in their group. Um, top two in the group means um, that they'll advance to the uh, tournament bracket afterwards, which will be, I think, single elimination. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the shout out. Um, goes up. Uh, all right. So he is going to go scouting. He's going to go have a look at this iron mine, which is reasonable. Uh, he's forcing a committal here and he's using his favorable ground to dodge out. This is a pretty good play. Um, you can kind of see his decision to uh, discard mountain does not fall is paying off here because um, it would have been pretty huge in this uh, situation. It's amazing, like, a, a single fawning diplomat can force both of your characters to defend. 
just so many surprises from the scorpion uh, conflict deck that he's just not confident with just the one um so zello is going to take that but now this leaves the door open for a military conflict from effigy um are we going to see another conflict character from zello i don't know going for that water ring was really smart as well um not only to threaten bowing their guys but to deny the the counter watering turn two i find usually is a turn where water ring has a lot of value in in games of l5r especially with scorpion in the uh, in the matchup because scorpion um have stuff like fate worse than death that removes fate cool we got some uh some hungarian fans in the chat it is do or die for them like i said okay so we just see the way of the crab i think this is clever uh you have to sacrifice a, a three three with a fate or lose your ready character i think he almost has to oh we do see the edict so that's the first edict of the game um pretty important one to do i think there it's going to give him an opportunity to do a second conflict and keep his character which is important So I think this turn actually um, the Scorpion has outmaneuvered Zello a little bit here. He's gotten the better out of this turn. If he can break this province, I mean that is fucking massive. If he can go in and bonsai and break this and discard Iron Mine, that is huge. We do know that Zello has a reprieve in hand still. Um, Effigy is running two calling in favors though, so we'll see if that comes out as a counter counterplay. Daxora says the Hungarian crane won the first game. Oh, I might be mistaken, man. Let me just double check that. So let's jump over to the standings. World Cup groups. Oops. Hungary, uh, Indonesia matchups. Here we go. Oh, you are correct. I am mistaken. So it's do or die for Indonesia. My bad, guys. My bad. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, Daxora, appreciate that. So we see, okay, so he doesn't have the bonsai. This is kind of a little bit lucky for our crab. Um, he does steal another on us. It's the second successful resolution of the air ring. And he does have three dishonored dudes, which is pretty cool for the scorp. Um, pretty important that he didn't have that second bonsai. That would have been quite devastating for the crab. Oh, did he forget? No, that was from the previous conflict. Never mind. And we see Fawning is going to go off in the fate phase there. So uh, the Scorpion player is going to get the favor. He was going to do so anyway. Um, okay. So, generally speaking, Kai Shuichi is a complete toilet against Scorpion. <laughs> he just does not function very well. Um, his Covert's not as big a deal because they have conflict characters. He's got two glory. Oftentimes, he's going to get Fate Worse Than Death before he can use his ability. Um, he's just generally a liability in this matchup. He's good against almost any other matchup. Uh, Satoshi's not bad here. Um, filling up the discard with Keepers could be pretty big. And you've really, really got one option here. So if you're Zilla, you're buying that. And it looks like Effigy is going to put the clamp on. So our Indonesian friend is going for some hard dishonor pressure with a four-fate Shuri. Which is always a risk to put four-fate on a big guy against Crab. But um, with the amount of conflict characters that he's playing, I think it's probably okay. Oh, wow. And we do see Zilla go for the Shuichi. Uh, even though there are no holdings in play right now. So i got to think this means he's probably got to rebuild again. Uh, otherwise, I just do not like buying this guy. I think he's just a liability. And I prefer Satoshi. His ability at least gets you something. Um, Grikugan suggesting just playing both characters with no fate and then adding in dupes. Yeah, that's more of like a short 
term strategy. So it gets you like a lot of tempo, but you kind of s sacrificing the economic game. Um, it is an option. So this is, here we go. This is a cloud. Uh, cloud on a 3 8 Shuichi is pretty horrible because it does blank his covert. We do see a spyglass. It's nice that he's got his second spyglass. Um, it was one bids as expected after that second turn uh, exchange. Um, Cloud the Mind has been deciding so many games for me recently. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why the prevalence of this card is one of the reasons why Crab has started to suffer a bit in standings. I think they've performed a little lot under what they used to because the Crab Unicorn build has no tool, like there's literally zero tools to deal with this unless you're running Mia Mystics, which is like a bit of an inefficiency, um, which really hurts Crab because a lot of their characters do have great abilities. So I don't know. I mean, Clouding Shuichi is normally really good because you get rid of Covert, which is really nice as well as his ability, but right now his ability is blank. So I'm not sure about that one. Uh, and we do see the Trickle of Honor towards Effigy. Shout out to you guys uh, watching. If you have any questions about the game, the World Cup, me, um, what I think about the matchup, what I think about the world, what I think about Donald Trump, you can uh, fire away in the chat. I am reading the chat simultaneously to doing this solo cast for you guys. It's mainly for me though. I actually really enjoy casting, even though I'm fucking rooted. Rooted is uh, Australian slang for tired. All right, so we see in the opening conflict for the Scorpion is going to be political one um, at Manicured. This is just to force Zello to either overcommit or suffer a ring effect and a honor loss. Throwing in a big body like this is quite clever. Um, forces two, two of his most powerful characters to defend. Both these guys are dishonored though, which is a little worrying. Um, and he does have four fate banked up, so I wonder what he's got in store here. We'll see what he goes for. So if I'm Zello, I'm probably going to be using... Okay, great play. It's always good to get a first uh, first action watch, Commander. My only concern with that is that you're doing it on a dude with no fate, as opposed to your three fate guy you just bought. Uh, and we see the immediate let go. Um, that card is just too strong to be in play for more than one action in this matchup. And I agree with that decision completely. So we know he had one of those. That was the one we saw in his hand, turn one from the Meek Informant. Um, we'll see if he's got another. But that this card usually decides this matchup. Uh, Greek Gun TV is asking if I live in America. I do not. Um, I did for a period when I was like in high school. I went and lived in America. My mom's from the United States. But I am an, an Australian. I live in Melbourne, Australia. I was in San Francisco for a co-tie as well, which was pretty cool. Uh, okay, we see the Talisman. Um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, you're definitely moving the Shameful Display, I would have thought. Um, it's interesting that Zello favored the... Watch Commander over the Talisman. Because sometimes you'd play the Talisman first to bait the let go. Okay, so we see a Court Games. Shuri is now on it. And we're definitely moving over to... Shameful Display. We do know that um, Zello does have one Reprieve. So if that can stick, and this character can stick around, that'd be pretty important for him. Dizzy suggesting Talisman is super risky. That's a fair point. If uh, if Effigy does have one of his two calling in favors, um, getting railroaded into shameful display or one of the nasty provinces is really, really brutal. I agree. Uh, so it looks like Effigy's going to surrender this conflict now. He realizes that he just doesn't have the skill to, uh, to force this one through. But he'd be happy with the result in a way. I mean, you're getting a massive overcommittal here. 
I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see Zello sacrifice Witch Hunter to ready this Borderlands Defender. Um, Zello's deck doesn't actually have uh, Gaijin Customs, which um, down here in Melbourne, Australia, we rate very highly in Crab. Uh, most of our Crab players down here play two of them, and now Kotai winner in Melbourne was running two. Um, as, so you set, you cut one Talisman and run two Gaijin. Helps against the Scorp. Uh, so you, it hurts a little more against certain other matchups, but... Overall, it's really strong. Um, okay. But yeah, I will be going back to the States uh, this November for the World Championships. Haven't decided on deck or anything. I haven't pl been playing a lot of L5R recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm a Hatamoto for Scorpion and a, I got Hatamoto for Lion. Um, so maybe I'll pick another clan. I've always been a Lion guy with Crane as my second clan since the old old L5R days. Um, so we do see the Steadfast Witch Hunter going off to ready Borderlands Defender. And this is kind of curious. He's not using Shuichi here. He's going to run at Pilgrimage. I would think that Earth is a must because he's only got the... He needs he needs the additional fate to play his Reprieve. Um, yeah, you'd definitely be going Earth here. I just don't understand why... Like, I don't understand what this Shuichi is gaming Zello here. I know I've been harping on it a bit, but I really would have preferred Satoshi. And if you are playing near Mystics, you can Satoshi to go and get one, and then you get to remove clouds like this. I don't know if he is though. I don't think he is. Greek Gun says, "Lucky me." Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's like the first time I've been really obsessed with a card game like this in a long time, since I was like a teenager probably. Um, and the timing's just right for me to... I don't have like responsibilities, commitments here in Melbourne. Um, and I, lo I loved the experience of going over to San Francisco to play and meeting everyone there. So, um, Me and my podcast buddies, two of them are going as well, so we'll probably do a podcast on the roads at some point. Should be a lot of fun. You want to get an Airbnb and all share bunk beds, play L5R all over the place. Okay, so he we see him going for the cache. This is kind of interesting. To preference going for the secret cache in a low bid game, um, where your opponent's hand size is only four. When you got a pilgrimage, which is quite a safe um, province. Plus, if the Earth Ring doesn't go off, it's more or less the same as him getting a a card from Secret Cache. I think I like going here more. Um, so this is a lot of skill. Uh, six skill coming at um, Effigy here. Uh, it's a political conflict. We've still got a Court Deer here, which means for Shames are always an option. Um, probably don't want to expend Fate Worse than Death on her. I think just like a Court games for shame would be nice. We'll see what he what he ends up getting with his uh, secret case here. He's still looking. Dizzy drone says attacking shameful seems like the better play. Definitely an option. Yeah. Um. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's not losing you much. I guess the honor is a concern eventually. Um, these games always come down to the wire um, with the honor stuff okay so we see him defending with the ancient master and just pass pass yeah given that it was pass pass I would have preferred to see pilgrimage uh, and we see the unassuming Yojimbo hit the deck which is really really brutal considering Kai Shuichi currently does not have covert um it is going to mean that whatever conflict... This is interesting. So I'd probably be going for Water Ring, right? 
Going and breaking shameful. Go for watering. Readying my shiri. Okay. Man, this cloud of the mind is doing a lot of work. Nullifying an eight fate investment. Oof, pass and a break. He does go for the watering, which is smart. And Shiori does stand up. So. I gotta say, man, this turn is being is being played very well by the Scorpion. Um, I think hitting that secret cache was probably an error. I mean, like, unassuming a Jinbo could have been the card he got. We don't really know. Also, uh, Zella's gonna lose an additional honor because of Shiori, which is quite brutal. Um, so at this point, Zella really wants to break this province, uh, given that he's already triggered the effect. And he's going for Void. This is like a pretty important ring for him to win. If he can Void away this guy, it's going to be go a long way to him winning the game. Um, there's no reason for him not to gang block here with the uh, Court Novice and Shiori. We do see that. Okay, so Effigy's just going to straight up pass. He has no cards to play, so he's going to concede the ring effect. Um... It's not going to get the break, but the ring effect's still pretty nice, and he does get the spyglass draw. So we do see a hand advantage of 7 to 3, which is quite good. Uh, and this unassuming Ajimbo that just got played is going to meet uh, her demise at the end of the phase here. Does he have... Oh, he's got no fate. So even if he did have the calling in favors at this point, he does not have the fate to, uh, to steal. So a nice little turn saver there from Zello. I think that turn could have gone... A little worse I feel like effigy was getting the better of him there but um, that's pretty nice in the end he did win three of the rings as well feels like the scorpion is quite under the pump um, what he really wants is for this borderlands defender to go away next turn so he really wants Zello to not draw another reprieve or rebuild or another an iron mine. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, Grigagon's asking if Zello plays Meditations on the Dow. I believe he does. I'll just double check for you. Uh, yes, he does. Yep. This is a very good flip for the crab. Um, I mean, I'm probably buying that Vanguard Warrior regardless, but then, and then just passing, and then the following turn I buy Casada. Seems like a strong line of play. Um, yeah, the crab's just maintaining a nice board edge, despite, I feel like Scorpion getting the better of general play. Um, this turn looks to be good for the crab. Okay, so we do see him just go for the Hail Mary play of Hita Kasada. Um, this kind of says to me that he's got some other way to save this character, because otherwise I think I would have gone for this. So we'll see how that plays out here. We see a Rumor Monger. And an Insta Snap Pass. Um... Game's getting hard for the Scorpion. Um, one thing that is going in his favor is just the honor total's quite low, which means a card like Shiori actually gets quite threatening for a game, game win, game loss situation. Dizzy Drone suggesting easy buy Vanguard and pass. That's probably what I would have done. Because um, you already have a board lead, right? Like going into the turn, you have two characters to one and they're stacked with attachments. You're first player, you buy the guy. They have to, they have to at least buy one or they're going to get run over and then you pass, take the fate. I would have done that as well. Um, Kisada, though, um, in a game where action economy is at a premium, uh, where each action, sorry, is quite important and valuable, given that 
both players have a low hand size. Um, Kisada is quite strong in this sort of a game. Um, we'll see if he manages to draw another cloud, but uh, it is going to be a two bid to a one bid, which makes a lot of sense because this is going to turn on his stronghold here, City Open Hand, which he does just use straight away. Um, so Zello is kind of praying for a top deck watch, Commander, Reprieve, Rebuild right now. Those are the three cards I'm looking for from Zello. And I'm almost certainly going for this air ring. It's got the fate on it. We only got the one. The crab fate deck's expensive. And um, honor press is going to start mattering. Probably going to run. Oh, we see a call in favors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Talisman. Strong play. And he does end up dishonoring the court novice instead using the room among us text. That is a strong play. Um, it's going to deter. Zello from making well, it's going to act as a deterrent for, from Zello from making attacks here um, he's going to go for it anyway here is to um, somewhat immune to a lot of the nasties that Scorpion can do um, and with only two fate he's not threatening two fate and effigy side he's not threatening a fate worse than death um and he's got to spend at least one action to to turn off Kisada here. Uh, so we'll see how this works out. I mean, this is really brutal, right? Hita Kisada is so good in this situation. Like, you, you can't Talisman first because that will get cancelled. What do you do? You play... It's a military conflict. So it's not like you can just play a court games or or defend with a... You can, I guess if you have a shame, you can play that first. Forces of Defense... It's actually very, very strong against Scorpion um, when the bids are low. And he just takes so much to nullify, right? Like, he takes two bow effects because he's got zero glory. Doesn't care. Two dishonor effects, excuse me. Yeah, he's just going to let it go. I got to say, that's a big win for the crab. Um, it means that Kasada's still on for the rest of the turn, at least for now. And uh, he's going a long way to getting that dishonor victory. He does steal one on the back. Getting that break is pretty important as well. Although it does mean that his next attack is going to be quite brutal. Yeah, Greek Hugan agrees with Zello's uh, decision making there. Maybe I was a little... Maybe I was a little short-sighted about the Vanguard line. It really depends on what's in his hand and if he can save this Borderlands Defender. Uh, okay. So now if I'm Effigy, how do I approach this conflict? It's unlikely... Oh, we know he, for a fact he has no more Mountain Does Not Falls in his deck. Um, you have the Talisman, so it's hard for your opponent to do a counter-attack. This seems maybe like too many characters though. He's going for Void. Huh. This is interesting. I potentially would have gone for a different ring. The Void ring really doesn't... I mean, this is more of a denial play, right? It's to stop Zillow getting a Void on the counterattack and removing Fate from the young Rimmonger with a Talisman. So for that reason, I like it. But generally speaking, when your opponent only has two faded characters, you're better off going for the Void Ring the following turn, I feel I feel like. Because um, there are more immediate benefits you can get from other rings. He does defend with the Shuichi. We do get another Spyglass draw. So that's three cards this game that have been drawn from Spyglasses. Sorry, four cards. Um, which in this particular matchup, you can equate to Honor in a way. It's kind of counteracting the City of the Open Hand box, in a sense. Um, and we do have two of the let goes and one of the calling in favors having been spent for Effigy, so um, the next watch command is likely to stick around. Okay, and we do see a ornate fan. This brings the totals up such that the crab's losing, but the scorpion play is not breaking the province, so we'll see... Uh, Okay, we see Zello go for a court games to honor, which is interesting. 
Um, given his primary win condition, his Dishonor, and Shuichi has two glory, I kind of like the other way. Um, what do you guys think about that? I kind of like Dishonoring, because then you get caught games. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Zello plays the court games. My mistake. Not the Scorpion player. Uh, oh, he's going to try and use Rumor Monger here. I think he must have clicked pass too quickly. Ah, he's already used it. Uh, Greek Gun says water would have been nice. Yeah, water would have been nice too. Um, if you go for the water ring, it just forces a defense from this character instead of this one. I'm not sure how much actually gains. Now, this is kind of interesting. If this was, if this spyglass wasn't the card that was drawn from the other spyglass, I much would have preferred him to play it before the conflict began. Um, wow, and we see Zello able to bring out enough skill to win. Man, it feels like the Scorp really hasn't had a lot of conflict actions. Apart from that, I guess there was a... The Fashame was discarded to Earth, which was like a really odd decision to me. The Fate Worse Than Death was massive, and then it's just been a couple of court games. Apart from that, there's been no... Apart from turn one, there's been no actions really played in conflicts for this Scorpion player. It's been a bit rough. It's one of the advantages of, of holding their bids low and keeping their hand size down when you're playing against Scorpion. It's a really, really strong strategy. And uh, Greek Ugan reminds me in chat that Kisada is still online, which is a very important point. And that is probably another reason why Effigy didn't want to spend so many cards. If you don't have like a lot of cantrip actions, like some clans, against some clans, Kisada doesn't do much. Um, like Lion, I can just staging ground or whatever. Uh, Phoenix, you can play... You can put into play your Feral Ninos over and over. Um, but like Scorpion, it really hurts Scorpion. It's just one of those things. So I think you almost certainly Talisman as the action to break for Kasada, and then you use your Shameful. Yeah, you can't let the crab win this. You can't let the crab break this undefended. I think that's just insane. So he does make the decision to defend. Um, let's see how he approaches this. Oh, that's brutal. He it tries to use shameful. Um, I gotta assume that's a mistake because there's no benefit to saving the talisman for later, right? Because this is a, this only works when an attack is declared. It's not going to work. Definitely a mistake there from effigy. Um, could be a costly one. We'll wait and see. He's got to get one skill here to uh, prevent the break, uh, and he can't do it. That is. Uh, Pretty tough position, tough spot, and the Earth Ring is going to go off. So assassination gets discarded, not a big deal. Um, but this hand discrepancy is starting to look a little ugly. It's six to three. It does get him the keeper, which is going to get him favor. Not like he wasn't already smashing that anyway. Uh, icing on the cake here would be a reprieve or a rebuild, but it doesn't look like he has it. Um, so he to Kasada paying off massively in that turn. Maybe I undervalued his ability a little bit. Um, I think one thing you got to factor in is the likelihood that your opponent draws a cloud. Because if they draw a cloud and you invest 9 fate into Kasada, the Vanguard Warrior is definitely the better buy. Um, but that particular turn it did a lot of work. So, um, man, that was a really, really good turn for the Crab as predicted. Um, just anytime Crab goes into a turn with a board, let, board edge, you can be sure that they're in a good position to have a good turn. Um, yeah, good play there by Zello and a uh, little misstep there from our Scorpion friend. He does flop the Hidden Moon Dojo, which is nice, so you can just insta-pass. 
which he does. Um, and this isn't this game isn't over yet. There are still outs for the scorpion. Um, it does hurt that he, the crab player is on his stronghold, and he does know the the uh, the province there is rally. Um, but given that the crab is going to be on four honor after the draw phase, and there's a Shiori in play, I mean, don't count out the the scorp. He also does have ten fate, so it's plenty to play around with. So we see a Vanguard for zero. Uh, if I'm Zello, I'm I'm probably going to consider playing the Steadfast. Steadfast looks pretty sweet to me right here. Uh, Greek Ugarn's asking if Zello plays Sencha. I don't believe he does. Uh, just double check that for you. No, he's just... It's it's a very sort of... Um, there's only slight updates to the to the old style. Meaning Kudaka and Cloud, really. Um, the Scorpion play does have two Senchas, though, so... Okay. Back to the action. <clears throat> We see, predictably, some one bids. Um, there's the Stronghold. Um, the Hidden Moon Dojo is actually a nice action to to use for Kasada purposes. It's pretty good. Okay. So right now both players have plenty of time left on their chess clocks, so I don't anticipate it's going to come down to that, thankfully. Um, despite being on turn 5, I think both players have played at a quite a reasonable pace, which I'm a huge fan of. If you've seen my Arguments with people in Discord chat. I'm always uh, for the chess clocks. Definitely a fan of fast play. Um, I think it's a skill that should be celebrated. In addition to making the best decisions, making them quickly should be a consideration. Anyway, so here we go. Uh, first player is Effigy. He's going to pass his conflict. Um, feeling like making an attack here isn't going to get him anything. He does have Talisman. Uh, rally here. I imagine he's probably not going to trigger rally. He prefers the political conflict. Uh, okay, so... He needs to have one cantrip action to turn off Kasada, move the guy to... Actually, at this point, you probably just want to try and defend and prevent the break, right? Because you're, the second conflict that the crab makes, you can talisman over to Shameful if you if he ends up threatening to crush. Um, this is just quite devastating. This is Shuichi now drawing two cards. Wow, an effigy goes for a military conflict instead. I mean, this means he's got nothing in his hand to help with the political side of things, i got to imagine. Um, Shuichi does have a lot more political stats. I mean, at this point, I think if I had a fate worse than death, I'd be trying to get it off here. Um, you got to find ways around Kisada. I mean, do you use a storehouse to, to stop Kisada? It seems so expensive at this point. Um, there's a 9 card to 4 card hand advantage here. This is a really tricky turn to defend here for the Scorpion. Um, I think Shiori really hasn't done what she... Like, he's invested 9 fades into this character and she's maybe only lost, made him lose 1 honor. Um, just the way the game played out, she really didn't... He really didn't get value for money there.
so he does use the storehouse. Um, so this time he doesn't remember Kasada. <laughs> Finger of Jade on Shuichi. It's a good play because it means that the um, Fate Worse and Death is no longer an option unless he's also got some way to remove the finger. Okay, so he ends up playing Miyako. All he needs to do here is prevent the break, right? Because in the second conflict, he can talisman away. He would really like to win a void ring, I think, as well. Um, if you could void this guy down, that would be pretty, pretty important. Although with the Vanguard Warrior out there, it's... This is a really cool interaction that I had no idea worked this way. Miyako, if you play her from the Hidden Moon Dojo, triggers herself. <laughs> Which I thought was bonkers, but after reading it, I guess it works that way. Um, very, very strong little subtle interaction there. Um, and we do see the Rumi Manga is going to shift that Dishonored token over to Satoshi. There's some really cool little plays being made in this game. I really actually enjoy this matchup a lot. Zello's playing a bonsai. So this is to force out this talisman early. He's trying to force out the overcommitment on this conflict. Which I really like this decision. Um, very, very smart decision. Because then he's going to put the game within reach uh, for his second conflict. If, he, if he's able to get uh, Effigy to commit this talisman. This game is getting tougher and tougher by the action here for our Scorpion friend from Indonesia. Um, should the Crab win here, Hungary will take the, the series. Um, however, I believe there's one more game to be played, which means it's important... Um, I know I play for Australia and we ended up going down uh, one to two, round one. Um, but it's important to play that third game, get tiebreaker points, because you want to try and sneak into the top two if you can, for your group. Wow, and it does force out the, the talisman. Um, it's really, really rough here. This is going to put the game within within Zello's reach, uh, assuming he can mount a significant offense. Uh, it also means that Kisada is going to still be on for the rest of the turn, which is really quite brutal. Uh, at this point, do you let do you let the Scorpion get his? Yeah, he does. So he's saving. He's smartly saving this finger of Jade uh, in case of the Fate Worse Than Death. This game is very, very hard. So now if you're Effigy, you have to decide, do I use this now? Do I play another guy? Or do I save my fate for the cards I got in my hand? This is one of these spots that I'm sure if you guys have played much L5R, um, you guys watching the game, you'd have seen before. It's, it's just incredibly brutal. Um, being pressed against the wall by a crab opponent um, and you're just kind of praying they don't have that extra save he does end up playing Sh Shoju which I think is probably wise and passing absolutely brutal so I gotta think this is also a water ring which is gonna bow out this room manga which is quite huge I mean water ring has really proven to be one of the strongest rings in this particular game which is normally isn't right it's normally viewed as one of the weaker rings but in this game it's had a lot of value um yeah i'm just not seeing many i mean zello is on three honor um so you got to be careful but this second conflict i just don't see how the scorpion player defends it without maybe if he has both the shames
Kisada's still online. He can't really attack here because if he attacks, he expends one of his guys. And he really just can't afford to do that. If the watering was still up, you could attack water, right? Because then you could ready a guy. If he doesn't defend, if he defends, you're, you're keeping parity with his, with his characters. But that is not an option. He is going to go for it. And he's going for air. All right, so he, I guess he feels like this is his last shot. I think he's identified that uh, it's not going to happen for him. Defending this second conflict is not possible. So he's going for a Hail Mary. Um, we'll see if it comes off. It would be an amazing win if he was if he were able to here. Um, it's going to be very difficult, but I mean, Shoju can kill a lot of people. He's putting Zello to the test. This is a pretty cool play, actually. Here he goes. So how does he get a win here? He's got to kill a Dishonored character. If he can kill a Dishonored character, force the conflict undefended, win the air ring, and, and uh, make him lose one with Shuri. That's four. So yeah. So he's got to do one of kill a Dishonored character or make it undefended and win and use Shiori. Which is certainly possible. I mean, Satoshi's not exactly healthy, right? Oh, is he playing Fiery Madness? No. No Fiery Madness there. I'm trying to think what else. Kami Unleashed? Kami Unleashed. If he has that as a one of in his hand. You got no fate. Never mind. Just trying to work out what other way of the Scorpion. He hasn't played many ways, right? He hasn't played any way of the Scorpions. So that could be a big play here. This is quite tight. Um, now, Kisada's still on. So you've got to work around that. So it's really important. You've got to decide how you spend your actions here. Really, really tough. Shudarev saying he doesn't like Zealous defense. It seems risky with the low political guys. I agree. Um, especially given that next turn he will be first player going into uh, a largely undefendable rally box. I mean, it's it, it does feel like Zello has won the game throughout the turns. Like each turn he's been building incremental advantage. Um, Effigy did have that good turn too, but man, if he can win from here, it would be fucking incredible. We'll see. It's a very tight game actually. Okay, so he's going to make the defense with uh, Satoshi and Kasada. I imagine his first action is going to just be Stronghold. <sighs> Strong play. I would have liked this to go over here, personally. Because if this guy dies, you lose Nona. If this guy dies, you don't lose Nona yet. But still, the card is incredibly important right now. Um, it's going to make a huge difference. That is his last fate, so both players no longer have any fate to play with. I think that's going to secure the win here. Yeah, because Shoju, Shoju can bring her down by one, which gets her to one. Then he can box, gets her to two. And he's going to have some other debuff, which he doesn't have in his deck. If he had a, a fate and a fiery madness, it could do it. Very, very tight game. I think, yeah, there's no reason not to box here if you're Zillow, which he does. Effigy passes. Okay. Very interesting. Um, very, very interesting. So, I don't know if the crab player is going to have enough skill to actually break this turn. He will be able to get a Void Ring, though, which is going to be really fucking painful. I'd imagine he goes void. Now that the Scorpion player has won a conflict, right? And he's played no copies of Way of the Scorpion, I'd be a little concerned about sending these two in. Because if he Way of the Scorpion Vanguard Warrior, like, what do you do? 
You're on one honor. You have to play reprieve on him? <laughs> It'd be absolutely brutal. We'll see what happens, man. Uh, this is a ra razor thin game. The margin here is so slim. Ooh, so tough. What would you guys do? Part of me thinks you should just not attack. And just all in next turn. The other part of me is like, if you don't void that shoju, he's going to be a real menace next turn. Or you can go for firing and then like, even if they weigh the scorp, one of your guys, if you win the ring, you negate that. It's one way to safeguard against it. If he has two way the scorpions, you're just fucked. <laughs> Very, very tight game. Uh, Shooter is asking if he's playing three assassinates. Let's have a look here. He is playing three, so he does have one more. Uh, yeah, two, two, one has been spent and one got discarded, but fuck, that would be pretty insane. This is like quite a risk for the crab. It's risky if you do, but it's also risky if you don't go for it. One thing it could do is send the initiate alone. Then if he plays the way of the scorp, you can use your vanguard warrior to give your initiate fate. So you're not at least losing this turn, regardless of the outcome of the conflict, which could be nice. But if he has way of the scorpion into assassination, you're just straight up fucked. Really interesting spot. Really interesting spot. I mean, you could work out the exact odds that he has it, right? Like, you could go and plug this into a calculator if you wanted to burn some of your time. He does end up passing his opportunity, which I think is a conservative option. It's a good option, though. Um, one of the big reasons why it's a smart option is Kisada plus Watch Commander, right? Next turn, you just run at the... Even if he's got way of the Scorp into Assassinate, he's never going to get it off. So, I think I like that decision. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of that. I think I think that was the right play. Demagoglus. What's up, Demagog? He says, yeah, he can go in next round. Yeah. I mean, he took his time. So, he realized he had enough time on the clock to really consider if it was worth it. And I didn't even know until... You know, I had to think about it as well, and I'm sure you guys did too, but... Yeah, that was one of those spots. It's just... It's not worth the risk, right? It's unlikely that, that Effigy does have that, those combination of cards. But if he does, you immediately lose. So, those spots are always very, very difficult to navigate. So, well played, Zillow. He's been playing pretty well this game, I think. Okay. Okay, so definitely this flip favors Effigy. It's a better flip for him. But I'm still not seeing how he manages to successfully defend this first conflict. It's going to be very, very tough. Um, we see the Yusuke come out with a fate. Makes a lot of sense. And we see the Actress. Actress is a uh, very high value. See what 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 are what's available here? Borderlands Defender. Probably Borderlands Defender is your best bet. Man, it's pretty lucky that Cooney Laboratory didn't flip up. Holy shit, that would just be an auto loss, right? <laughs> He's got two in his deck, so if if he flipped this up. That's just game over. <laughs> this card's a huge risk, man. Huge risk. Uh, Greek Gun does remind me you can rebuild in Dynasty phase. That is true if you have the rebuild. If you flip it and don't have the rebuild, you, you just lose. I, oh, no. I guess you can Satoshi. Never mind. He does have a uh, safeguard there. Still, only eight 
Dynasty cards in his deck. <laughs> I'd be a little nervous about that. This card's quite... I mean, it's very, very strong, don't get me wrong, but towards the end of the game, it's really not worth it. Okay, so yeah, like the chat is pointing out, he does have the Imperial Storehouse um, to cancel. Uh, Kisada here. Uh, with only two Fate remaining, though, he doesn't have Fate Worse than Death Fate, so... I'm really not seeing how he... Uh, how he gets through this one. It can be very, very tough. Oh, double Covert as well. That's super rough. Oh, man, what a time to get those... Uh, this character is just so, so strong. Makes me wince when I look at my Lion deck and, I, and then I look at these guys. <laughs> Man, this is a very, very close game. I know, like, if you're just tuning in now, it might look like, oh, the crab's owning because he's got four provinces down. But it's actually... There were a couple things that could have gone the other way there in that last turn that would have ended the game the other way. Really interesting uh, game to watch. So, I can't imagine he leaves out these skirmishes, right? Yeah, they're coming in. And he's going for air. This is to give him some breathing space just in case something crazy happens. I like this, assuming he doesn't have cards in his hand he needs fate for. Pretty smart. Uh, he's going to hold back Satoshi because he's contributing zero skill anyway, which is also smart. Um, and he's coverting the two biggest skill guys. Yep, I like it. I'm seeing nothing wrong with it. At this point, you have to heavily favor Zello to close this out. Uh, I'm trying to think about what sort of ways... It has to be... A dishonor into a kill effect, but I'm just not... Uh, the only one left is Assassinate, right? And he can't... He doesn't have the honor to play it. It's a very close game. Is he running I can swim? I don't think he is. Yeah. It's just the assassination. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so we see a defense with three skill. I, I'm just not seeing the skill level needed. I just don't see any outs here. Very valiant effort though. I mean, fuck man, this game came down to the wire. <laughs> okay, so we do see the Imperial Storehouse coming off first. Another Watch Commander, and I gotta think that's gonna seal it here. That's the third Watch Commander. And with only four honor in his pool, that's just gonna make it impossible, I think. Yeah, it feels like Zello's got a clamp on this conflict. GG is called. I gotta say, that was a really pleasurable game to watch and cast. Um, very, very tough. Uh, congrats to Zello for pulling through. Um, navigating his way through that tricky little trap that, that uh, Effigy was potentially setting last turn. He is saying, damn, if you had attacked last round. Yeah, that was that was quite an interesting spot because my gut instinct was immediately to go, oh, I'll go get Void Ring. And he, d he does say he did have Way of the Scorp Assassinate. Um, yeah. 
I, I didn't think of that initially, so I don't know if you guys did, but uh, that was very, very difficult. Fantastic game to watch. Um, yeah, they're saying in chat now that they were discussing it for about f a few minutes there. Um, that is one of the cool things about this format is that you can sit, it's within the rules to sit with your teammates and talk about um, avenues of play. Um, and it's not costing your opponent anything because they you're on the clock, which is very equitable. And I'm a big fan of the format. I really enjoy playing with it. Um, there are always going to be some weird corner cases where both players run out of time at the same time or something like that. But I think overall, it's great. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm Tori Dory, aka Birdie Boy. Um, probably done for the night unless uh, someone can persuade me to do another cast. But yeah, um, stay tuned for more L5R. Uh, check out uh, my podcast, The Hidden City Roller Derby, with all me and my Aussie Hatamoto buddies. It's uh, always good for a laugh. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.